Hey everybody, it's Mr. Smeets, and today I'm introducing a brand new series for the channel, FRQ Fridays. So if you're ready to write like a scholar, let's get started. So you might be asking yourself right now, why do I need to watch an FRQ Friday video series? And the answer is that ape scholars score so much lower on the FRQ writing section of the exam every year that it holds down the overall pass rate on the exam and keeps it near the bottom of all AP subjects. And it is so bad that the benevolent overlord of AP world himself, Trevor Packer, tweeted about this exact issue last summer. Now he congratulated congratulated ape scholars on their highest scores in this subject in over a decade, but he also pointed out that low performance on these open-ended FRQ questions is what continues to hold back ape scholar scores from being as high as many other subjects. And he even gave a little bit more detail saying that 20 to 50% of ape scholars earned less than three out of 10 points across all the FRQs on that 2022 exam. And I can tell you firsthand, this man is not lying because in 2022, I scored almost 2000 apes FRQs and I rarely needed to get out a second hand to keep track of points as I went. But enough about the woes of ape scholars pass. Let's see if this year we can work together with the FRQ Friday series here and move that percentage of fives on the apes exam across the double digit threshold. I'm serious, you guys, we can do this. Let's change the tune on that 2023 tweet thread from the Pac-Man so that he's congratulating this year's ape scholars you guys on the highest percentage of fives in apes history. So you may be thinking, Mr. Smeez, that's cool and all, but how are we actually gonna do this? And the answer is FRQ Fridays. In this first FRQ Friday video here, I'll be posting a practice FRQ down in the comments, and then I'll be annotating it on screen so that you have some tips and tricks that can help you when you actually go to write this practice FRQ. Then next Friday, I'll post a video where I go over the answer key to this practice FRQ and I'll score some sample responses from actual ape scholars. And this is where you come in. If you want me to score your actual practice FRQ response, I need you to email me a typed Google doc version or send me a picture of a handwritten response to apes versus everybody plus FRQ at gmail.com. And if you want me to score your actual paper handwritten response, you can even snail mail it to me, stamp and all to my new PO box address right here. But just be sure that however you send it in, you clearly let me know whether you want it scored anonymously or if you want a shout out on the channel. And of course, if you don't want your FRQ scored on Apes YouTube here, or you're just watching this video more than a week after it's posted, feel free to follow along and self-score your FRQ at home. And if you run into questions about how to score any of your answers, feel free to leave your questions down in the comments below. So now that we've covered the basics of why FRQ writing is so critical and how these FRQ Friday series videos will work, let's get down to our first FRQ Friday FRQ. It's the F it's the FRQ for this FRQ Fridays. Uh, you get the idea. Since most of us are past unit one at this point in the year, we're gonna start off with an FRQ from the 2014 exam focusing on biogeochemical cycles. So in part A of this practice FRQ, we're asked to describe a biological process that removes carbon from the atmosphere and converts it into an organic molecule. And then another process that converts the carbon in that organic molecule back into a gas and returns it to the atmosphere. Our first step on any FRQ prompt is to circle the bold task verb and write the number of layers of detail that your answer needs to have. So in this case, I'm circling describe in both prompts and I'm writing a two above them since these prompts usually require roughly two layers of detail. The next thing I'm doing in both prompts is underlining biological process since this is the target of the prompt or what my answer has to do. And above biological process, I'm gonna write done by a living thing just as a reminder to myself that my process has to be carried out by a living thing. And finally, I'm gonna add a box around removed from the atmosphere and converted to organic molecules in part one, since these are what I like to call modifiers or things that my biological process has to do. Now in part two, I'm doing the same thing, but this time I'm drawing boxes around converted from organic molecules and gas returned to the atmosphere, since these are the modifiers in this part of the question that this biological process has to do. Now in part B, we're being asked to explain how atmospheric carbon is incorporated into two oceanic sinks. So I'm gonna start off by circling explain and then writing a three above it to remind myself that I need three layers of detail in this answer. And then I'm going to underline oceanic carbon incorporated since this is the target of the FRQ. And I'm gonna draw a box around oceanic sinks since that's where the atmospheric carbon needs to be incorporated. Now in part two, all we have to do is identify a terrestrial sink other than fossil fuels that stores carbon for millions of years. So I'm gonna start as always by circling identify and writing a one above it, since identify questions typically just need one complete phrase or thought in order to answer. Next, I'm underlining terrestrial sink. And finally, I'm drawing boxes around both other than fossil fuels and thousands to millions of years, since both of these are modifiers of that terrestrial carbon sink that I need to identify. Now in part C, things get a little bit tricky because we have a discuss prompt, which is an outdated task verb that you won't see on future exams, 
but in this case, you can treat it just like an explain. So let's go ahead and circle it and write a three above it. Now the target for this FRQ is human activities, but we have to be careful here because we actually have two modifiers to draw boxes around. The first is other than fossil fuels, and the second is increased concentration of carbon in the atmosphere. In part D, we have another discuss prompt that we're gonna treat like an explain. So we'll circle that and write a three above it, but we also have an identify in the first sentence of that question. So we're gonna treat these like two separate points. The target of this identify prompt is an environmental problem. And the modifier is that it's one that results from elevated atmospheric carbon concentrations. For the discussion point, we're just explaining a consequence of the problem we identified above. So the only real modifier here is that the answer that you provide needs to be a consequence of the problem that you just identified. And finally, in part E, we turn our attention to the phosphor cycle with the first part of this question asking us to describe a way that the phosphor cycle differs from the carbon cycle. And we close out our first FRQ Friday practice FRQ with a nice easy identify prompt that's just asking us to give a reason that phosphorus is necessary for organisms. There you have it, Ape Scholars. We've just annotated our first FRQ Friday practice FRQ. Now it's all teed up and ready for you to write. So set yourself a 20 minute timer and try writing this FRQ so we can come back and score it together in a week. Or if you're feeling particularly brave and want a shout out on the channel, go ahead and email or snail mail me your FRQ so that I can score it for all of Apes YouTube and Instagram and TikTok to see. Now, if you're feeling overwhelmed by all of this talk about FRQ writing and task verbs, I've got a playlist right here that's gonna walk you through that whole process step by step. And if you need a little bit of a refresher on the carbon cycle, I've also got a video on that topic here that's gonna cover all of those steps and processes in depth. Whatever you do next, make sure that you always remember to think like a mountain and write like a scholar.